For the subject of his most recent documentary, Maryland native Stephen Fisher delved into the topic of creativity. He held a series of conversations with filmmakers, actors, musicians, and other artists to learn how they developed their own creativity to become successful. Cinema Maryland's Elizabeth Homan has more on Old School, New School. Over the years, Maryland native Stephen Fisher has talked with his friends and mentors about art, philosophy, and finding success, always over coffee and tea. Fisher finally decided to capture the spirit of these conversations on film in his documentary, Old School, New School. When making documentaries, one of the cardinal rules is to avoid talking heads. By contrast, Old School, New School makes a very deliberate break with convention shooting real, honest conversations, and letting the documentary's audience listen and learn. I think there's no greater gift that uh, a storyteller or an artist could give to society than to share something that's personal and meaningful and uh, hopefully has some truth to it that inspires someone else to think a certain way or to follow their own path in a direction that maybe they hadn't thought of before that's helpful to them. With his decision to create an unfiltered look at creativity, Fisher experienced moments of doubt. After a year or two of doing this, uh, you know, doubt starts to, to creep in and you wonder, I really, what's the sanity of this? Is this really right? And about this time, I'm questioning whether or not I should be even doing this this way. Uh, I saw a movie called Cinematographer's Style by John Fowler, and what John did to examine the art of cinematography. He collected 110 of the world's top cinematographers and sat them down one by one individually and recorded a conversation with them about the art of cinematography and, and their passion and how they do what they do. But then he cut 110 people into a, an hour and a half movie. And there's no B-roll, there's no examples of their work, it's just them talking. And um, it was so, uh, inspiring from the sense that here was a, a major movie that had uh, a, a lot of critical acclaim and, and a lot of distribution around the country and around the world uh, doing what what I was trying to do. While watching the film Cinematographer Style, Fisher was immediately struck by the words of wisdom from William Fraker, the cinematographer behind such Hollywood movies as Rosemary's Baby and Bullet. Now why are you doing this? I'm bored. <laughs> uh, because... What do you want to do with it? Well, let me tell you that. Why don't you guys start rolling? Fisher just knew Fraker would be in his movie. And through a series of serendipitous events, he became one of the central interviews, joining actors Brian Cox and Ben Jones, jazz legend McCoy Tyner, and others. The artists speak about their struggles and their successes, providing answers and provoking even more questions. But it's also the concept of home, you know, of home, what that means and has always meant to people. I think that's really what I've been doing all my life, is just finding the place where I'm going to be, I'm going to feel this is where I should be. The movie is designed to provoke even more questions with an audience. You know, it's designed to get them thinking and contribute to a discussion that I hope is already happening, that people are having anyway with their friends in a cafe or, or their classmates in a classroom. To connect in such a way, Fisher and the directors of photography use natural lighting throughout the documentary. It was also a conscious decision though to challenge ourselves as storytellers to I think tell a story that was more um, naked to put it bluntly. Um, there's a vulnerability in art that I think can only be found when you uh, don't have anything to hide behind. And so just as the interviewees didn't have anything to hide behind, neither did we as filmmakers. And for Rosensteel, his skill as an artist was enhanced by both what he shot and by what he heard, particularly from actor Ben Jones. I was so impressed with his eloquence and his thorough knowledge of acting. And I could have listened to him talk forever just about the joy that he found in acting and in what he learned about himself and about others doing that you know year after year. And audiences appreciate that a documentary is taking such an honest approach. Our industry 
is really like a, uh, a series of circles within each other, like a bullseye. It's a series of rings. And when we are just wanting to get into this business, we are outside the outermost ring. And it takes somebody on that outer ring to bring us in. And when we do, we advance to the next ring closer to our goal, which is that center spot of the rings. And uh, around and around we go until somebody else approaches the rings and wants to be led in to go after their dreams and they can't until somebody brings them in. So if you help somebody, you advance a little closer to your goals. And it's a series, you know, it's, a, it's cyclical. You know? uh, so old school, new school kind of um, tips a hat to that. You know, it's uh, something that I'm doing to help myself uh, and, and share with other people at the same time. Fisher is showing the documentary at colleges, universities, and conferences. In fact, there was a young student from Kansas City who wrote thanking me for the movie and saying that he watches the movie uh, every morning to sort of fire his creative juices for the day, which is the best email anybody could receive. Uh, high praise indeed. And that's exactly what I was after, too. You know, that kind of intellectual stimulation to get people thinking about, about things that are important. Fisher continues to share his documentary across the country and is looking for new venues. Learn more at his website, stephenfisher.net. For Cinemaryland, I'm Elizabeth Homan.